there's another approach that we can take that will basically allow us to count k-mers and is essentially similar to the Bloom filter. And it's ca called a counting Bloom filter. So remember, in our Bloom filter, we had an array of bits, our buckets, and so when we pass our kema through our hash function, we've got multiple hash functions. We're going to set the bits appropriately depending on the values that we get back from our hash functions. So in this case, each of these bins is either a 0 or a 1, right? But what if, instead of having the, each of the bins be a 0 or a 1, we made each of the bins be a length C, where in my case C is 6 bits. Now, instead of just setting the bits to 0 or 1, in fact, just setting the bits to 1 like we do in a normal Bloom filter, as we add things to the Bloom filter, we can actually just start counting, right? And so we know how many things have been in our bins. And we do that at each of the locations, and we just keep track of the counts in each bucket. Now remember one of the features of the Bloom filter is that occasionally you're going to have two different kamers pass through different hash functions and get the same value. And so maybe instead of incrementing this bin with the kama number one, I increment it with kama number two. And so when I come back and I say, how many times have I seen each of the kamas, of course what I do is I get the hash functions, I get the values, I go to the locations and I get the values, I may not always get the same value for each of my bins because in some of my bins I'm going to have collisions and some of them are going to tell me different answers. Now in principle, in principle, the bin with the smallest value is most likely to be the count associated with my kama. Now that principle depends a lot on how frequently you expect collisions. Because if as I'm adding things, let's say I add here and then I'm adding here and here and here and then I'm adding here and here and here and now I'm adding my original camera again, here and here and here. Of course, um, here I say I've seen something four times, here I've seen it twice, here I've seen it three times, and here I've, oops, this one should be three times. So here I say I've seen something four times, here I say I've seen it three times, here I say it three times, and here I've seen it three times. None of those answers are right, because I've only seen the blue sequence twice. However, however, I kind of have a bound on how many times I've seen something. This is what's called a counting bloom filter, and one of the implementations of this is what's called a count min sketch, which was elegantly implemented by Titus Brown's group, and is a really effective way of counting kamers. What you need to remember about it is that the counts you get out at the end are kind of approximate. In fact, they are approximate. We can't guarantee that the counts you get out at the end are correct because multiple kamers could contribute to each of your bins. However, if you have enough bins and your hash functions are distributing things around avoiding collisions, then the count that you get out will be very close to the frequency of your kamer.